All right, we have a really exciting R tip this week. We're going to be doing pivot tables, Excel, and R. Uh, this is really cool. Um, so check it out. So I'm in the 006 pivot tables. If you don't have it pulled in, just do uh, get pull and it'll pull it. Um, and you can set up your Git library for your free R tips. So you get those every week. Um, and those that information's in the notes. So um, what we're going to be doing is working out of this 006 pivot tables on our file. We're actually going to be making this PNG, uh, which is just an image of a stock chart here that's been pivoted. And you can see the data is being summarized here. We've got the percentage change per year for each of these different stocks. And it's in a nicely formatted table. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And it's really easy. So uh, let's check it out. I'm opening up the Excel pivot tables that are file. I'm also going to open up the outline and we're going to go down through it. So uh, this is our tips number six, Excel pivot tables and R. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to get these weekly R tips into your email inbox, make sure to sign up on the email newsletter. There's a link in the notes for this video. Um, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be loading in some libraries. So tidyquant is the library that I developed. Uh, it includes the pivot table function. So it's got a lot of Excel functionality in, uh, that's actually been ported over to R. We're also going to be using the tidyverse. Um, and this is just one of the core uh, meta libraries that's going to load in a bunch of different libraries, ggplot2, tibble, tidier, readr, per, and so on. Um, we're also going to be using gt. And this is uh, what makes the tables look really cool. So it's going to convert our data to um, tables. So I'm going to hit control and enter, load that in. Next, I'm moving down to the getting of the data. We're going to use tidyquant tq get, and we're going to get for four stock symbols uh, from 2010 to the end of 2019. And what I'm going to do is select just the symbol date and adjusted column. So when I run these two lines, it pulls in a bunch of data. Um, it takes a second to run because it's got to hit Yahoo Finance's servers. And then um, what we're doing here is downloading a bunch of information and we're just going to select the symbol date and adjusted. So symbol date adjusted. And you can see we've got 10,000 rows by eight columns. So this will be actually 10,000 rows by three columns. And now it's been stored up here in my global environment. Um, if I take a look at it, it's just the symbol date and adjusted. So this is what I call raw data. And what we want to do is we want to use pivot table. So if you're familiar with Excel pivot tables, uh, you should feel right at home. What we're going to be doing is making the percentage change by year chart that we showed previously, which is right here. Um, and, but first I want to just go through some basics of how you use this pivot table function. So if you do question mark pivot underscore table, you can see down here, there's a ton of examples or there's some examples right here of how you would set up a pivot table and it goes through some information about how you'll want to be able to utilize this. Um, so the main uh, arguments are going to be dot rows, dot columns, and dot values. So you pipe your data in. That's the first argument. So we've got our data here, uh, which is just our raw stock data. And then we use dot rows, dot columns, and dot values. And if you put this little tilde in front of it, you can actually ca uh, perform calculations on these columns. So what this first pivot table does is it um, assigns the rows, symbols, columns, um, and then also the month uh, of the date. So it's taking the date and extracting out what month it is, January, February, and so on. And then the columns, uh, it's assigning the year of the date. And you don't have to include, you know, you can just you know, include different combinations of the rows and columns. And then in the values, that always takes a numeric column and summarizes it. So you're applying some summary function uh, that's going to aggregate by symbol, month, and year, and it's going to create a table that's been pivoted. So let's check this out. Let's run this line here. So we just took this data here, symbol, date, adjusted, and we uh, aggregated the symbol in the rows, the month in the rows, and then uh, the columns are going to be the years, and we're taking the median of the prices. So that's what's being put into the middle. And you can see it's a 48 by 12 tibble. Um, and then we can add an, on another line to rename these columns just to make them look nice. So we got symbol month and then the years. Um, we can take that same data and do the exact same processing 
but pivoting slightly differently instead of doing uh, the rows being symbol month we'll do year and month in the rows and then the columns will be symbols and again we're just summarizing the median so there's a tilde in front of any of the uh, calculations there's a year being extracted out of date a month being extracted out of the date and then um, the median of the adjusted values so we'll take this here and just run these lines and you can see it's the exact same data, but it's just been pivoted slightly differently. So now we've got year, month, and then in the columns, it's now Apple, Google, Netflix, NVIDIA. Um, and you can see it's 120 by 6 now, uh, where before it was 48 by 12, because we had the, uh, the columns are the years. Um, so now it's just a slightly different shape. Um, and then we can do, finally, the, the same thing one more time. Uh, except for columns, we're doing month, and now in rows, we're going to be doing year and symbol, and then the values are going to be the same thing, median of, of the adjusted stock price. We run these lines of codes, and now you get the year, the symbol, and then you get all of the months in the columns. So if you understand that, that's exactly how a pivot table works in Excel, and this is how you do it in R with this pivot table function from the Tidyquant package. So pretty slick. Um, TidyQuant includes a lot more Excel functionality, so um, I'll be doing more videos on those soon. Um, so let's do the final objective, which is to create this PNG file I've got here. Um, we'll, we'll show you how to do that. So I'm just taking this raw stock data, and we're going to calculate the percentage change by year using this percentage change first last. So instead of using a median, of the adjusted price, I'm doing a percentage change between the first and last data points um, that are being summarized. So I'm summarizing by year and by symbol. So for each symbol, it's going to grab the first and last data points in each year and summarize those. Um, so if I run this here, I get a table that looks like this. And it's just data right now. So it's got year, Apple, Google, Netflix, um, and it's just uh, some data. But I, what I want to do is I want to save this data and I want to convert it to a chart. So I'm going to use this uh, package called GT, and, I, and um, I'm not going to go through all of the code here line by line, but basically um, it just takes our raw data, which looks like this, and then when I start piping it into the GT functions, it starts formatting it, and so on. And you can add headers, you can add, uh, you can format percent, um, you can add spanners, uh, which adds this little performance thing here, the notes, um, which is the note at the bottom here that I'm, I'm including a data source, um, and then start adding some styling, uh, which will be, oh, I need to run this color fill. Um, so the color fill that I'm filling is going to be this color, and this will add conditional formatting. Um, so I'm adding some conditional formatting for anything that's greater than zero in the Apple column. Um, and then I do the same thing for the other columns here. Um, so the final chart looks something like this, where we've got the, um, the values where it's positive each year uh, shown uh, for this technology portfolio. Um, I'm going to save this as the pivot table GT. So now that's saved in memory as pivot table GT. And then what I'll do is in section five here, just save the chart. So I'm going to use this function GT save. Now, just real quick, this does require phantom JS to be able to save this as a PNG. So if you need to just do control shift C and that uncomments this, and you can run this function right here to get, um, to get phantom JS installed. And then once you have that installed, you just run this and it saves it right to the file location right here. And you've got your PNG. Cool. So if you understand that, this is now uh, a useful tool in your tool belt to be able to create pivot tables and not only just create the data, but make them look really nice so you can put them in reports. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R Tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here. Put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.